Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. Uh, last time we did these two, so now we're going to do this. Another night, another ramble. Classic song comes back to you as you continue on your way. Some of that good old earth wisdom about being... <laughs> about a specific kind of footwear being made for walking. You wish you had that kind of footwear right now, in this current chapter of your life. Or any footwear. You definitely learned your lesson about getting overexcited at the prospect of new friends, and running out in nothing but a bathroom. Who are you kidding? Maybe not in that particular bathroom, but chances are high that wasn't the last time you'll fly off the buoyant, fly off in the buoyant afterglow of an intense friendgasm. What? All right, we got Chixie Roxamer or Tizius Entic. Um, so we got a teal blood who appears to be like data entry or like a clerk or something and we have well, let's go left by right huh? just up ahead you see a troll lever hive muttering to herself she's holding an unstable mountain of papers and books with one arm using her free hand to hold a mug steady she isn't paying attention here which is fine don't get it twisted you'd love to make another friend you just understand that now it's a weird flighty thing some trolls you mesh well with some you know you smile at her just in case but when she walks right by you without stopping you shrug planet shock full of friendable weirdos you'll live you take only a few more steps before the sound of her absolutely eating shit on the sidewalk makes you turn. It happens fast enough you really only see the aftermath of oven and books and papers running down in an impressively wide circle around her. Aw, oh, globes. Damn ass rock. <laughs> it was this gay ass damn ass rock, dude. I don't know if you all know, but oh god, I'm so far away. There's this absolutely classic video of kids attempting to pull a skateboard trick and bombing it uh and they and this kid starts crying like a baby and he refers to the source of its consternation as like a damn ass gay ass rock it's it's a piece of history it should be put in the library of congress you know she gets up but that's as far as she bothers to get after taking a sip from her mug which somehow must have stayed level in her grip during her fall she sighs and gets back to work gathering it I'll back up with a free hand. Yeah, this checks out. As a thing that would happen to me. It's not like I have anything else to be doing. You see the teen movie or two in your day? You know this trope. Cool kid helps the unpopular nerd after they fall like a chump and embarrass themselves, and the pair establish trust. By the time credits roll, they've gone and fallen in love. Not you necessarily fall want to fall in love, or you're under the delusion you are in any way cooler than her, but still, it's a tried and true. Also, like, a pretty decent standard person thing to do. Pretty standard decent person thing to do. So, like, the decent person you hope to be, you just got all over. You stop just short of in front of her wide-flung ring of items. You want to make sure she's not going to yell at you or murder or anything before you interfere. What? Dick I busted ass. I know it's a scene. Well, what are you waiting for? Be a good bystander and stop standing by. She gestures kind of all around here, and that's confirmation enough. You bend to pick up a heavy-looking book, and there it is, emblazoned around the cover. A gavel. A humongous fucker of a judgment implement, too, with spikes all around the handle. Dread creeps from up your spine. You slowly slide your gaze from the book's cover to its owner. She doesn't have any ostentatiously blood-color-themed clothes on. Although, wow, she's sporting socks and sandals. Maybe you are cooler than her. But the very prominent eye bags are tinged teal. Ah, globes. A lawyer. It's not you don't appreciate your one lawyer friend for who he is. It's just you aren't sure you have uh, it in you to sneak your way into the heart of another. You got lucky last time. The scales of judgment in your heart start to weigh in your chances. You start making neat piles of her stuff. After watching for a second like she's making sure you're not screwing up, she dramatically heaves herself to her feet and joins in the effort. Uh, I don't have time for this shit. Make sure to keep the bees, uh, the B-34s together in my red folder. You look down at your current pile. Uh, B. That's the one with a little hook at the top, right? Or is that G? Sweat prickles at your temples. You've picked up a little bit of written alternia in here and there, but you're not anywhere near competent at it. Sifting through papers, you search for anything familiar. You make it a few words, but there are a lot of those little guys on these papers, and you've got performance anxiety. Oh, right. You probably still can't read. You look up at her, startled. How can she tell? Well, I mean, you don't look much like a troll. It isn't exactly a, a gargantuan mental leap to assume you're not from around here. 
but I've also heard about you. You straighten up. Any press is good press when it comes to friends discussing you, right? Teal's talk. Oh! Unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> all the Teal Bloods know each other, I guess? I mean, I guess they all, like, are in uh, bureaucracy. I guess they would. Puts a mug down to the ground and picks up a fallen book, talking as she flips to whatever page she's looking for. Little asshole's gonna have to say even more unfortunate crap when he to say to me when he finds out I set us all back by dropping half our group project in a ditch. She paces in flustered circles until she finds a bookmark among the debris. Flicking a wet leaf of, uh, off of it, she closes it in the open spot of the book and s she shoves it in the open spot of the book and slams it closed. Ugh, whatever, I can't think about that yet. Got to get all this back in order first. Right, yeah, the ordering stuff. You keep at it, doing the best you can to keep similar-looking things together. You can feel her eyes on your back, and you turn to face judgment. You basically got it right, actually. Oh. He did say you were quick at the draw. I'm Tizius, by the way. Oh, because she's in a tizzy? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, she doesn't so much smile at you as a grimace. It looks mostly pleased, as exhausted expression goes. That's as good friendship materi building material as any other. You certainly started with m worse than being complimented. The breeze plays at the end of her frizzy hair, ruffling a few pages while it's at it. Hmm. Now that you aren't frantically trying to prove your helplessness, helpfulness and have a moment to think, you don't know if the sidewalk is the best pace to be starting from scratch with the whole filing system. You open... <laughs> your mouth to tell her as much when a huge Papa Gust follows in Breeze Jr.'s wake, blowing the neat stacks back into chaos. Mother She sinks back down in the snow globe of paper, taking a long sip from a mug sitting next to her, and then tilts her head back and unleashes in a single deep gut holler. You scuttle around, catching documents out of the air until the gust is gone. It's not that Tizius doesn't seem capable, it's just he seems a bit burnt out. You know what it's like to feel like you're at the end of your rope. So now you have half a swing and grab at a handle on things. You feel like it's your turn to do the heavy friendship lifting. You know a breaking point when you see one. You weren't expecting it so early in a potential friendship encounter, but still, it's clear the troll needs some time to chill. This is a mess, yeah? She swings the pendulum of her chin over to glare deadened knives at your guts. Oh yes, it's a mess. But it seems like maybe, just perhaps, it would be best to sort of put a pin in it, suck air in, and get it out of our insulation sacks or whatever, and just get it together for a minute. No group projects were ever aced when the clear leader was not at her peak mental performance. She wrinkles her nose and closes her eyes. You know what? Fine. Fuck it. Not all of it, of course, but this night specifically, and everything and everyone I know or have thought about extensively before in my life. So that just leaves you. What do you have in mind, friend? Because I am all out of ideas. That word still doesn't number on you, no matter how many times you hear it used flippantly. Ooh! You have an idea already, so you hurriedly gather her shit into extremely unorganized piles, which she drops in her hive to deal with later. You have expected to not come back, but she does. She's only kept one heavily annotated tome and her mug, which she nods at when she speaks. I know, I know, but these are for just in case. Anyway, do your worst. With a salute and a few gentle tugs at Tizzy's sleeve to keep her moving, you get going. You and your Alternian pals have taken turns leading each other some pretty wild places in your time here. The place you take Tizius to is somewhere you haven't shared with anyone. It's where you come back on days when you can't find a friend or don't want to impose on the friends you've made. It's on the outskirts of town where the buildings are spread thinner until the landscape cuts outward, cuts outward in a jagged cliff face. Bolted into the side of the rock is a tower was left of one. It's basically a heap of scaffolding and rusted out ladders holding up a half-covered platform, but it's been a good place to staunch bleeding and stargaze. Hmm. Do I give off an outdoorsy vibe to you? Does my half-untucked button-up and paltry muscle mass scream would love to scurry up a dilapidated relic? You'd kind of worry about her hating your plan, but you kind of feel like she'd complain no matter where you took her, so at this point the die is cast. So heave-ho, you say. It's stronger than it looks. You offer to hold her stuff for her during the ascent. She gives you the book, but clutches the mug against her chest. You know better than to pry, but you're dying uh, a little wondering why she's so weird about it. Unless she's got liquor made from viscera in there. Or maybe Hilursus gave, us, gave her the mug, so it could be special. Could be both. Uh, you shrug and start climbing. Like before, uh, like you thought she would, she follows you. And like before, she complains about it the whole time. And like the structure itself, you both weather it fine. 
And at the top, she looks around. Is this your hive? It's more like a hideout. You're a little shy about it. It's not as fancy as your friend's hives, and you don't have any weird animal parent to make you snacks. They're only little keepsakes you picked up along the way. Uh, set up on the creaky old table next to some complicated old tech you couldn't get the power on. This must be an old watchtower. From when that was part of her imperial bitchiness's preferred method of surveillance. She runs a hand over the dusty screen. Oh, Triza, you learned about her. <laughs> no. Her bigger, badder, off-world counterpart, the Condens. Condis. Ah, you look at the rusted barrel of some terrifying weapon mounted in the corner, and then over the landscape in sprawling town. In the, uh, in the distance, smoke rises from a freshly demolished hive. Glinting in the moonlight, drones circle it like buzzards. It's been like this here for a while, then. You sit down, your legs dangling off the side of the platform. Tizius joins you, a safe distance from the edge. That is one hell of an understatement. But yeah, we've got a time-honored status quo in operation here. Streamlined. Efficient. Brutal. Tizius looks miserable. That's not what you were going for. You summon up the old Roy G. Biv in your head for the thousandth time. She should be safe, right? Teals are middle class? Anyway, uh, she's a lawyer. She's got the powers that be on her side. Saying so doesn't seem to cheer her up at all. I mean, you're not wrong. But being in a position to benefit from the system doesn't make the system more morally palatable. As someone who can pass as a straight male, um, I can confirm. And if I'm being real about it, it's more me being forced to uphold it than anything else. She nods towards the book in your hands. Oh, right. How does this work, anyway? Can she just not be a lawyer? Aren't there good ones? Yeah, I can quit. If I want to get cold, there's always a choice. Yeah, that's the philosophical choice of the last choice. Of just, hey, you can always just kill yourself. She sighs. It's not like I expect suffering to ever stop completely. It just seems like an awful lot of work to do. Make sure it seems... Fuck, I'm messing up her quirk. To make sure it keeps happening. And that's the entire job of a legislator. Unless you're purple enough to get away with it. You're just guilty no matter what. It's just a matter of going through all the fanfare of a trial, all for the same result. It's sick, but it's so normal by now, no one knows how to begin questioning it. She looks more exhausted now than she did during your paper explosion, like when all you've used up <laughs> when you've used up all your sadness and all you have is a deep broken fatigue. Oof. This isn't exactly the rejuvenating getaway you envisioned. There's just so much injustice. You continue to try to be positive. Are there not political parties? Some secret underground movements or anything? Sure, most lowbloods you've met are, have a healthy fatalistic nonchalance about their situation, but gotta be something else. There were a few people who tried to stir shit back up in the day. Uh, and it's all kind of hushed up and hard to find any information on the history of them, though. Definitely not the kind of thing they teach you in legislator training. One was a mutant blood, and the other had wings. Um, that would be Karkat's ancestor, the Sufferer, who's a uh, troll Jesus. Um, to the point that's that what's that's what they start calling him in the comic, Troll Jesus. They also misspell it as Jigas sometimes. And then I think the other one is Vriska's uh, ancestor. So I guess they didn't have much of a chance anyway. You can't imagine the story having a happy ending, but you still want to know more. There's the subtler shift in her tone of voice that she's doing more than only complaining. It draws you in. One of them seems to have gathered enough of a following to have become a kind of religious figure... From what little I can find about him, the other one led a military revolt. They both were killed along with their attempts at change. I don't even know what happened to their compatriots. She stops to squint at you. I don't know how you got me talking like this, but in the fuck it spirit of the night, I'm just going to keep going. 
If it wasn't clear, I'm telling you things that can get me extremely cold. So like, please be chill. You're so you're the chi yeah probably pretty coable yourself, but also chill. Good point. She st she squints at you a while longer and then stares out into the night. Her jaw muscle clenches a few times before she speaks. I have some ideas. She's not looking at you, but she sits a little straighter. You feel your spine following suit almost on its own. All of us training to be legislators like to practice throwing our weight around. Some of us more than others, which I guess you have first-hand experience with. But we don't all have all that... We don't have much real power yet. We will, though, if we pass our exams... Which I will. I've been staying up most days studying every documented piece of the law and some underground stuff too when I find it. There are exploitable loopholes they don't know about. If I can establish myself as a major player, I might have a chance to change things. Some things you can only take apart from the inside out. By now, she's f built up a fevered energy, even with the sluggish way she talks. When you shift in your seat, she kind of snaps out of it. Oh, sorry. I guess I got a little worked up. I don't exactly get to talk about this very often. It's kind of overwhelming to think about how fucked up every little thing is all the time. Boy, me and, me and you both, dude. But now that I see it clearly, I can't not do something... It's like Alternia is a giant fire, and I'm pissing on a tiny corner of it, while the rest of everything burns up around me. Your brain is buzzing with how real that all felt. You can't really add anything to it, so you just nod. Are things less abysmal where you're from? Oh boy. In a ways, yeah. At home, the accused is called a defendant, at least. As in, they get a defense. Her eyes brighten. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Does your justice system work? That's a loaded question. <clears throat> you exhale slowly, trying to buy yourself time to encapsulate all of your planet's various cultures, societal structures, and similarly overwhelming list of injustices in an intelligent blurb. You, s blurb. you settle on not always and not for everyone. Her laugh is short and hollow. So much for enlightened life forms existing somewhere in the universe. You guess until a more kind and just alien life form t comes to take over, you'll just have to make do with each other. Yeah, you're not so bad. I'd take an oppressive regime with you any time. She gives your arm an awkward tap with her fist and then looks back over the edge. Anyway, I'm no religious figure or military strategist. There's got to be someone out there who is. Got to use what skills I have instead, I guess, until I find them. What the fuck else would I do with my time? Keep pissing on the fire is the best anyone can do, you reckon? That and get others hydrated enough to do the same. She laughs. Keep on pissing, huh? I'll drink to that. Takes a big swoop from a mug. After a beat, she silently and without looking at you extends her arm your way. You stare in the mug's depths, a little unnerved. It doesn't look like viscera, but you've been burned before. It won't kill you. This is the third instance of coffee we've had. One time it was actually coffee, the other time it was grub juice or whatever. Uh, you're not sure what it will do, but Tizzy is truthful of nothing else, so bottoms up. What the fuck? It's water. Tizius grins and taps her temple with a claw. Gotta give the people something. Otherwise, they might think I'm the way I am on my own. Then, where would we be? You don't know. Letting people in sometimes can be helpful. You know, sometimes. Shh. Shh. I'm fine. You're not convinced. Okay, I'll admit it. It's not a bad idea to relax every once in a while. Get your priorities straight. This was a decent time. You're glad she's glad, but mostly you just talked about the whole the whole time about the same stuff she was overwhelmed by to begin with. Does that count? You learned a lot, but she looks pretty wiped. As soon as you think that she yawns, she's so driven. You shiver a bit 
when you imagine what she could do if she took time to rest for real. You pat the pile of uh, blankets next to you. It's no bed, or tub of soap or slime for that matter, but it's gotten you through enough. She looks warily at it and yawns again. I guess my Lucis and my mate sprit will just think I'm at the book hive anyway. One little nap won't hurt. I'll get up early tomorrow and reorganize our stupid busy work project. She tentatively lowers herself onto the blankets. Her eyes close for a brief second before they snap open again, glaring at you with full force. Don't doubt me either. I've got it under control. Oh, you have zero doubts in her abilities, you say. She curls back up against herself, and a small rattle of contentedness shakes in her throat. Out in the distance, the blade has dimmed to a thin plume of smoke. You hope whosever hive it was is okay. You're not sleepy, so you'll keep watch to make sure she's up by sunrise. You tilt your head back and look at the unfamiliar constellations. Your head feels full. It's intense and not exactly what you'd call happy, but you know that you're feeling it with her, and that's far from nothing. Oh, I did it! Awesome! That was an interesting one. Actually, let's look at my achievements. Wow. I don't know. I don't recognize some of these. I don't know why I have these, actually. I don't recognize them. Oh my god. All right. Let's do the next one. Um, here we go. Of stresses. Chixi Roxamer. Point is, you need a wardrobe change. You should have asked Elward for one of her rad leather jackets. You could really make one of those work. This is a kind of a crummy neighborhood, and there you go again, making snap judgments. Get a little alien culture into you, and suddenly you're an expert. Looks like you found the alternative nightlife. Well, technically, all night, all life here is nightlife. If people are nocturnal, shouldn't nightclubs be called day clubs? Maybe the... One moment. Sorry, I uh, had a hiccup. Maybe the lure of dancing and getting smashed with strangers is not enough to get people to bl brave the blistering sun. You doubt you'd brave a stiff breeze for it. You aren't much of a partier. But recently, you're all about new experiences. You'll try anything once. A long line of people snakes along the side of a building. Sorry, I had to do a little snuffle. A long line of people snakes along the side of a building. It doesn't appear to be moving. The club must not be open yet. You consider getting in the line, but there's so many people here. You really are more of a one-on-one -on -one friendship type. You go around the back instead to your old friend the back alley in the dumpster. Distantly, you hear music. It comes on every few seconds, then drops off. Maybe a soundtrack. Ah. You hear something else. Ah. A musical sigh comes from up ahead. You turn a corner to find a girl standing alone outside the back entrance. A heavy door is propped open with a chunk of concrete, like someone had gouged out of the street. The girl has on a sweater dress and leg warmers. I love sweater dresses. Uh, a bronze sign splashed across her chest. You wonder if you should consider painting a sign on your own clothes just to make yourself seem more normal. And eh, no, probably no point. <laughs> You'd also need to paint yourself gray and find a pair of fake horns. Who would do something like that? Sounds like a huge pain with no benefits. Yes, I'm aware. Homestuck fans are cosplayers. I've literally never been to any sort of convention where I didn't find someone in gray paint and horns. I have literally found at least one Homestuck cosplayer at every con I've ever been to. Girl hasn't noticed you yet. She's staring at her feet and sighing. Also, she's making weird whoops and clicking noises or singing a few bars of wordless notes starting li low and ending up high. It sounds pretty good. The enclosed space between the alley walls makes it seem like it's coming from all directions. Maybe you should just leave. She looks busy. But then another troll sticks their head around the open door, shooting the girl an unkind look and kicking the cement doorstop away. Ah, uh, heck. There's really only one reason you would prop open a door. Displaying the dexterity of someone far healthier and far less dressed in a slinky bathrobe, you grab the door before it can slam shut. The bronze blood girl's attention snaps up and she breaks off mid-note. She takes in the misplaced concrete and you holding the door. Oh, thanks for catching that. I would have had to go all the way around to the front. It must have been the wind. Just what sort of wind do they have here that could pick up a chunk of rock the size of a turtle? Unless wind is urban slang for some rude douchebag. 
She gives you a quick little smile and darts through the door, letting it close behind her with a solid click. Yep. Locked. Oh. The brief gleaming flare of friendship you felt when she smiled at you in earnest, thanks, stutters, and dies. You had a moment here, but now she's inside and you're out here. Where you will never reap the fruit of glorious friendship planted with that act of kindness. What's the point of doing something nice if you don't get any credit for it? I'm so mad. I'm so salty. Oh, I promised I would only do one. I'm only doing one. All right. This has been this episode. Hive Swap. Play it yourself. See the things that they've cheated me out of. I'm not that mad, but I'm salty. All right. See you guys later. Bye.